Well, welcome, dear students. So, in this session, we are going to discuss about the biochemical conversion of biomass via fermentation. In the last session, we had already discussed on different types of biogas production. I mean, the digesters the fixed and floating drum type digesters so today we are going to see the fermentation process straight away we will go to the lecture if you have not subscribed the channel please do it in order to get the notifications of the upcoming videos so more videos in the fundamental subjects apart from the energy also are expected from thermal engineering areas so please be informed and share with your friends also those who are in need those who are studying undergraduate postgraduate or diploma courses also please share to the maximum let them get benefited if you have any queries suggestions or feedbacks or doubts please be in touch using the comments below thank you for watching happy listening so all of you know what fermentation is right some bacterial action to decompose to change the properties of some substances in the presence of moisture and this bacteria obviously so there are two types of methods of industrial scale anaerobic digestion process wet fermentation and dry fermentation so traditional digesters biogas digesters or biomass digesters are said to be wet fermentation systems typically using wet waste streams as we have seen in the anaerobic digestion where the dry biomass is fed to the digester along with sufficient quantity of water so uh, mostly uh, the wet fermentation systems typically use wet waste streams like manure as input and adding large amounts of liquids to facilitate movement required for fermentation you need to mix it up properly so in fermentation you should have the option to mix it up so in both dry and wet digestion methods the term fermentation is often used interchangeably as i have mentioned in the last session in the last lecture of biogas plants i have told you that these two terms fermentation or anaerobic digestion are used interchangeably in almost all occasions so when describing the physical decomposition of organic material they don't have any difference especially when discussing about foods and beverages so in reality fermentation is a distinct biological reaction it is a distinct biological reaction that makes up one step in the great process of anaerobic digestion so fermentation is one of the steps in anaerobic digestion process so it is responsible for acidogenesis or the formation of acids how the acids are formed so it is the responsible step in the acidogenesis process so fermentation creates organic acids which are utilized to form biogas so finally we are getting biogas so this fermentation process is the responsible step which creates organic acids so you can see the fermentation process here so here in this diagram in this example the wheat straw is used as the raw material feedstock so it could be stored and the wheat straw the feedstock to be prepared properly by cutting and drying then catalyst will be used in the pretreatment then steam will be applied for sufficient moisture content then 
fermentation will be taking place in the presence of yeast and enzymes cellulose so obviously this will be cellulose right we straw so enzymatic hydrolysis and fermentation will be taking place in the presence of enzymes and yeast after addition of catalyst then it will undergo the distillation process and we will get the end product as ethanol we will get ethanol as the end product from the fermentation process and we will be having core products as there are some residual solids so enzymes can change cellulose into sugars so third step third or fourth step here yeah the third step enzymes will be added right so this enzymes can change the cellulose into sugars which can then be fermented into alcohol so that sugar will be fermented further into alcohol ethyl alcohol or ethanol so from cane sugar you can see which is C6H12O6 will be converted to ethyl alcohol here plus carbon dioxide so this is the final product so after undergoing the um, different processes what I have mentioned in the previous slide so different steps and initial raw product raw material or feedstock will be converted to ethyl alcohol finally so fermentation of corn or other biomass will produce ethanol so use of food stocks in this way might be seen as a poor use of food but river spillage or waste and outdated soda can be filtered cleaned and reprocessed repro uh, to produce wheat so instead of consuming the food materials directly like uh, cane sugar corn or other biomass which could be otherwise consumed as food need not be used to produce this kind of uh, biomass energy but the waste material bravery spillage outdated soda so all these waste materials which could otherwise not be used as food or consumed as food could be converted to biomass energy liquid fuels using the fermentation process so fermentation of stillage refuse and also produce methane so some of the examples i would like to mention here decomposition of grains sugar to form methyl alcohol by yeast especially in the making of wine you might have observed experienced right in some of the households they used to make wine from grapes and all so it is by this process of fermentation ethyl alcohol forming acetic acid in making of vinegar then fermentation is one of the oldest known chemical process used for obtaining ethyl alcohol from grains molasses fruits and waste liquid so ethanol can be derived from by fermentation of any of material containing sugar so it can be blended with gasoline to produce a new fuel known as gasohol 90% petrol and 10% ethanol which could be used in internal combustion engines now there are two different platforms to make biofuels liquid biofuels carbon rich platform and transesterification so carbon rich platform we will see what it is natural plant oil such as soybean corn palm and canola oils these are the carbon rich platform so transesterification of vegetable oil this oil soybean oil corn oil palm oil or canola oils produces fatty acid methyl ester commonly known as biodiesel it is another biofuel it is an important commercial air emission reducing additive so in the diesel fuel we can add biodiesel proportionately in order to reduce emission or we can use biodiesel as such so in the biodiesel platform specifically if you want to make biodiesel instead of any other biofuel that platform is termed as or the process is termed as transesterification transesterification so there should be some ester right transforming the ester so we will see that 
so in making of biodiesel we take vegetable oil animal fat or grease into biodiesel fatty acid methyl ester biodiesel is actually a fatty acid methyl ester so base catalyzed of the oil with alcohol direct acid catalyzed and conversion of the oil to fatty acids and then to alkyl esters with acid catalyst that is the process so finally we will be getting the methyl ester as the biodiesel so how to convert the landfill to gas in the biogas plants so landfill gas is generated by the fermentation of organic matter dumped in the landfill simply we are dumping tons of waste in the landfills in most of the areas especially in urban areas right so the landfill waste get fermented by natural bacterial decay especially 14 days or 28 days they release methane rich fuel gas if that methane is not collected properly what will happen it will cause greenhouse effect right along with methane it will be releasing carbon dioxide also so it will cause a great hazard to the atmosphere and the living entities so the collection of methane and or proper processing of the landfill waste is necessary for a better environment and a better future so landfill site is usually a void valley or a former quarry in which the urban waste is dumped the gas collection system consists of wells comprising vertical pipes with holes in the cylindrical body so it should be covered and there should be wells and pipes to collect the biogas formed now coming to the uh, last topic of the bio energy biomass energy ocean biomass energy conversion so these are the feed stocks large sea weeds commonly known as kelp algae water hyacinth they are rapidly growing plant floating on fresh water so these are the major sources of ocean biomass energy so these are the different steps we need to harvest it then process it for obtaining chemicals such as iodine from this um, seaweeds and all then we may have to grind it because of large in size we have to grind it to a powder type then a slurry needs to be formed by adding sufficient quantity of moisture or water then the passing the slurry through process you may have to press it okay compress it then Other next step is the pyrolysis process. You can get salts during the pyrolysis step. Then you can get carbohydrates. Then processed solids fed into the digester. So after passing through all these steps, grinding, slurry formation, pressing, then pyrolysis and carbohydrates in order to get some chemicals, salts and carbohydrates. Finally, it will be fed to the digester, bio gas digester for methane fermentation. then we will get methane and the residue could be used as a fertilizer for land so these are the different processes in ocean biomass energy conversion now before concluding let us see the impact of biomass energy in environment and its sustainability and relative advantages and disadvantages obviously it is a renewable resource it reduces landfills otherwise simply it will be dumped it protects clean water supplies biomass energy conversion process reduce acid rain and smog and they reduce greenhouse gases carbon dioxide and methane because we are collecting these two gases and using as a fuel and the carbon dioxide could also be removed appropriately So biomass emits carbon dioxide when it naturally decays and when it is used as an energy source it emits carbon dioxide that is obvious right because in the methane production itself carbon dioxide is a by product so living biomass in plants and trees absorb carbon dioxide from the atmosphere through photosynthesis so even though it emits carbon dioxide if you cultivate biomass properly for further production in that biomass cycle this carbon dioxide 
during the production will be absorbed by the living plants. So biomass causes a closed cycle with no net emissions of greenhouse gases. So that is the effect. If you are continuously using and cultivating biomass, it is balanced. Now coming to the technical impediments, trees and other biomass is hard to gather. Right? There is a laborsome process. There is a low output. Energy gain is pretty less. You may have to get a lot of biomass in order to get a little amount of energy. Development of cheap and reliable combustion techniques that will not release pollutants. That should be the next era. Then, gasification techniques to be developed that incorporate hydrogen to create synthetic gas. Then, biomass carries less energy per pound than fossil fuels. Biodiesel and all with blended with so many additives are giving you a higher energy content. Still, biomass as a whole, on average, is having less energy per pound than fossil fuels. Cost efficient to transport more than 50 miles before it is converted to fuel. Cost inefficient. Yeah. Because large volumes and weight. So, transportation is another major cost consuming <laughs> process in biomass conversion. Because biomass will be produced mostly in uh, forest areas and all, and the plants may not be installed near to that. So, transportation will consume a lot, lot of cost. The solution is to have a decentralized processing plants means less transportation so you we'll get a quality biomass since there are very less number of companies so there is less competition also so coming to the disadvantages crop and forest residues often contain high concentrations of important nutrients so all these things will be lost by converting it into energy. If the residue is harvested as energy, the nutrients can be lost due to, to the surrounding environment. Right? So, so, that nutrients otherwise would have flourished the soil is lost from the biomass. <coughs> but that is compensated by adding a fertilizer or nutrient or the byproduct from the bioenergy products, products, the fertilizers could be added back to the soil on a later stage if available. But that usually um, may not happen always. And we need to plant more plants and trees because they will be used in a higher quantity. So if you use one tree or plant for biomass energy conversion, you may have to plant 10 trees. Otherwise, there will be a large gap between the grow, growth and production of the biomass resource. Coming to sustainability, biomass is sustainable, but there is an expense in producing and converting biomass into fuels and electricity. Obviously, clear, right? Collecting biomass turned out to be very different than harvesting. As loggers gained more experience, the process became more, much more efficient. While biomass is one of the best forms of renewable energy, it is not a great fear because we have options like solar, wind, ocean, and all, which are more technically advanced. That's why biomass energy is still in the developmental stage in most of the countries. So removing too much biomass can use up nutrients from the soil and possibly increase erosion. That is a very good point to be noted, to be thought of. It supplies about 15 times as much energy than solar and wind in the US biomass and has the potential to supply much more. Why 
Elon Musk is not viable because, as I mentioned, there could be a large gap between the growth and supply. We may have to plant more trees and biomass in order to meet the demand on a continuous basis. That is difficult, right? So, a large requirement of lands. So, there are many problems in the development and transportation of it, and carbon is a byproduct of product. Producing biomass is like it's a byproduct of fossil fuels. So, in the when compare the fossil fuels and biomass energy production, carbon dioxide production is still still it is balanced in biomass because it is handled properly by the biomass itself. So there are better alternative energies and compared to biomass. We have developed technologies for wind and solar conversion still you can think of biomass energy conversion as an alternative for the future generation because for small scale or to a medium scale we can have biomass at least from the waste not as a primary energy source but Still, you can think of a secondary energy source or a standby energy from the waste to waste to energy process. Biomass will be a better one. So, with that, we will wind up the session on biomass energy conversion. If you have any queries, anything to be added along with these sessions on biomass, you are specific in your mind, you may comment below. We can have a session on that or um, we will proceed further with the another session on magneto hydrodynamic energy generation in the coming class. Thank you.